Hi everyone. So today we're going to look at the verb to be. Now the verb to be is an irregular verb and it actually comes in eight forms. Now the forms it comes in are am, is, are, were, was, been, to be and being. Now these change depending on whether we're looking at the past, the present or the future tense. Now the verb to be has two functions. It functions as a main verb but it also functions as an auxiliary verb or a helper verb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain all of these different things in the video but because that would be too long I'm actually going to have to split this into two parts. So the first part in this video I'm going to look at the present tense and all the different variations that you get. And in this video, if you wait till the end, I will also go through the abbreviations that are mainly used when we use the verb to be. Now we need the abbreviations because when we speak, we need to speak faster and the abbreviations help us to speak more fluently and faster. So, if you hold on till the end, I'll show you how the verb to be is used more fluently in conversation. Do you speak English? Yes, I do. Come join us. For help with pronunciation, intonation, fluency, accent reduction and more. EasyNativeEnglish.com Okay, so we're going to start with the first person singular, I. And as I said before, we're looking at the present tense. So it's I am. The am is the present tense version of the verb to be. So here we're going to look at the verb to be as a main verb. So this is showing being. So I am tired. So I am being tired. It's what I am being. Tired here is being used as an adjective, not as a verb. So it is used to describe how I am feeling. So I am tired. Then we have I am a girl. Now I am being a girl. Again, am is the main verb. Then we have I am excited. Again, excited is used as an adjective. It's being used to describe how I am. It's not being used as a verb here. So I am is the main verb. Excited here is an adjective. I am sorry. I am their teacher. So again, I am, am is the main verb. Okay, now let's have a look at the first person singular I in present tense, but this time the am is going to be used as an auxiliary or helper verb. So it's going to be used with another main verb. So we have, I am looking for my pen. Looking is the main verb and am is the helper verb. I am going shopping. I am carrying the baby. I am coming to work. I am helping my friend. As we can see, all the verbs, the main verbs here, have an ing ending. So we have looking, going, carrying, coming, helping, where am is used as the auxiliary or helper verb. We wouldn't say, I looking for my pen, I going shopping. We need to use the auxiliary, which is am. I am looking for my pen, and so on. Now let's move on to the first person plural, which is we. Now with we, the to be verb changes to are, because it's in plural form. So we have, we are very excited. We are nearly ready. We are brother and sister. We are his parents. So again we have are, the to be form of the present tense plural, being used as the main verb, showing being. 
So we are very excited. Again, excited is being used as an adjective here, not as a verb. Now we're going to have a look at are being used as an auxiliary verb with another verb. So again, we have we are having a party, we are looking after our son, we are going on holiday, we are traveling to work. So we have having, looking, going and traveling. Again, all with ing endings with the helper verb are. So now we're going to look at the second person, you. This is both the plural and the singular. So we have, you are their cousin, you are a good girl, you are a naughty girl, you are my best friend. So are here being used as the main verb. There are no other verbs in these sentences. They show what you are being. So moving on, now we have the second person, you. Again, the verb here, are, is going to be used as an auxiliary or helper verb. So we have, you are going to be late, you are trying too hard, you are counting it wrong, you are playing outside. Again, the verbs all end in ing, all the main verbs end in ing, and are is the helper verb. We don't say, you going to be late, you trying too hard, you counting it wrong, you playing outside. This is incorrect. They need the helper verb are in all the sentences. Now we're moving on to the third person plural, they. Here the are is going to be used as a main verb. So we have, they are kind, they are helpful, they are my dogs, they are just in time. So are is the main verb, there are no other verbs in these sentences. And here the verb to be is used to mean being. So now we're looking at the third person plural they. And we're going to look at the are as an auxiliary or helper verb. So we have they are crying like babies. They are fighting in the street. They are having a nap. They are writing a letter. Again, the main verbs all end in ing and we have the helper verb are. So just to recap, we have I am extremely grateful. You are an angel. We are only young. They are British. And to summarise the helper verbs, we have I am going to tell my mum. You are looking very sad. We are vacating the building. They are ringing their parents. Here, the am and the are are helpers. They are not the main verb. So now we're going to move on to the third person singular. He, she and it. And the verb to be is going to change to is. So again, it's going to act as the main verb to show being how the person is being. So he is very sorry. She is a wonderful person. The baby is like his dad. The child is very quiet. It is not their dog. So now we're going to look at third person singular. He, she, it. But we're going to look at is as an auxiliary verb or helper verb. So we have, he is going to school, she is being a wonderful person, the baby is crying a lot, the child is going to sleep, it is going home. So the main verbs are going, being, crying, going and going, with the helper verb is attached to it. OK, now we're going to look at these in abbreviated form. Now, this is how we would normally speak when we say the sentences. So rather than saying, I am very concerned, we would normally say, I'm very concerned. We would use the abbreviated form. We are happy to help. 
becomes where happy to help. You are very funny becomes you're very funny. They are hardly responsible becomes they're hardly responsible. Now we're going to see how the sentences are said in abbreviated form but using the to be verb as auxiliaries. So we have I'm making a boat, we're leaving tomorrow, you're talking too loudly and they're going to help. Now we can see here that we don't shorten the sentence by saying I'm making a boat we shorten the am to say I'm making a boat. We don't get rid of the r and say we leaving tomorrow. We shorten the r and say we're leaving tomorrow. We don't remove the r and say you talking too loudly. We shorten the r and say you're talking too loudly. Similarly, we don't get rid of the auxiliary and say they going to get help. We shorten it by saying they're going to get help. So we still use the auxiliary verb, but we use a shortened version. We don't remove it when we're using the ing ending of a verb. And similarly, when we're in third person singular and we're using the verb is, the main verb is, we would say instead of he is extremely fortunate, we'd say He's extremely fortunate. She's my mum. It's nice outside. The baby's fast asleep. So we don't remove the is and say he extremely fortunate. We shorten the is to he's, she's, it's and babies. And then when we're using the third person singular with an auxiliary verb, then we would say he is being kind and changing it to he's being kind, not he being kind. We say instead of she is liking the dress, she's, she's liking the dress, not she liking the dress. We say instead of it is going to rain, it's going to rain, not it going to rain. And then finally, the baby is sleeping changes to the baby's sleeping, not the baby sleeping. So let's have a recap of when the verb is used as a main verb, an auxiliary verb, and how we would use it as an abbreviation. So we have, I am tired, I am feeling tired, I'm tired, or we could say, I'm feeling tired. Then we have, we are tired, we are feeling tired, we're feeling tired, or even we're tired. Then we have you are tired, you are feeling tired, you're tired, or you're feeling tired. Then we have they are tired, they are feeling tired, they're feeling tired, or they're tired. He is tired, he is feeling tired, he's tired, or he's feeling tired. She is tired, she is feeling tired, she's feeling tired, or she's tired. It is tired, it is feeling tired, it's tired, it's feeling tired. And then finally, the family is tired, the family is feeling tired, the family's feeling tired, the family's tired. Okay, we're going to finish off by looking at the verb to be in the being form. Now, this is the verb to be as a main verb, but because it has an ing ending, it will need an auxiliary. So, we're going to have basically two to have basically two to be verbs together, which is a bit unusual, but this is how it works. So, it is I am or we are being silly. So I'm where being silly, or you are being helpful, being helpful. They are being nice, or they're being nice. He, she is being kind, 
or he's, she's being kind. It is being sensible or it's being sensible. So as you can see, when the verb form with an ing ending, you need to have an auxiliary with it. So let's just recap the being version. We have, I am being good, not I being good, and I'm being good. We have, we are being silly, not we being silly, or we're being silly. Then we have, you are being noisy, not you being noisy, and we have the abbreviated version of your being noisy. Then we have they are being naughty, not they being naughty, and they're being naughty. Then we have he is being odd, not he being odd, and he's being odd. Then we have she is being considerate, not she being considerate, and then we have she's being considerate. And we have it is being strange, not it being strange, and then we have it's being strange. And also the family is being very kind, not the family being very kind. And then the abbreviated version is the family's being very kind. So we need an auxiliary when the to be verb has an ing ending as well just like all the other verbs that have an ing ending. I hope you find that useful and you enjoyed the abbreviated forms and you can use them now more easily in your conversations and you understand why we can't drop auxiliary verbs when we're speaking. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! If this video helped you, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also tell us in the comment section below if there are any other videos you'd like us to make. Thanks!